<laughs> Hi guys, my name is Sarah Shower. Welcome back to my channel. For this episode of Block Party, I am joined by Damien Haas. Yes. Yes, and. And um, we know each other through Instagram. I've also yeah. met you a couple times in passing. Yeah, it was always like you were someone else's friend. Like my friend Sarah's stopping by. I'm like, yeah, hey, but I like don't want to insert myself in the convo. So we're yeah. just, we've had experiences like next to each other. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, you see him a little bit neurodivergent, as am I. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, you game like recognized game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, do you like Legos? And hell yeah. Hell yeah. So we are going to build a Lego set, and I'm going to surprise him with the set that I chose. He sent me a list of interests, which include anime, spooky stuff, antiques. Yeah. I was like, I have to find an antique set. <laughs> right, see, I, I was I was curious if you went that route, whether it would be like an antique set from back in the day, or if it would like be a modern set, but it's like spooky cuckoo mm -hmm. clock. And yeah, yeah. You know, but I'm excited for whatever you picked. Okay, cool. This is based off of a video game. Um, and I, I think, so close your eyes. Oh, sorry. Well, Dang I saw it. it. Well, I didn't <laughs> Wait, know. No. <laughs> this is so cool. Yes, this is uh, from Horizon Forbidden West. Mm -hmm. um, this is awesome. Oh, we're doing it in tandem. Yeah. Oh, I literally thought we were going to be passing it back and forth. Oh, that'd be so annoying. That, I mean, it would be, but I didn't say it. All right. <laughs> but this no. is great. I love this thing. Yeah, and you can take it home and destroy it. Like, mm -hmm. you leave and you immediately throw it down the driveway. <laughs> is that your, like, Patreon content of, like, you can watch someone just, like, baby tantrum their way out of this Lego set. Yeah, yeah, and then there's like an extra like category where like you step on it with your bare feet and I'm just like zoomed sure. in <laughs> and all you hear is you crying in the background. We've just crossed in a different kind of content. <laughs> oh, yeah. like, what if we zoomed into your feet? <laughs> but it's not about that. Yes. It's about the Legos. Nobody be weird, please. Please. Yeah. But um, this is the Horizon set. Guys, I will tell you, I uh, respect the writer's strike, obviously. Mm -hmm. It is so hard to find a Lego set that is not based on a movie though. Yeah, and, yeah. and everything is so unclear right now. Like I've even seen friends be like, hey guys, I can't do cosplays anymore. I'm like, no, you can't do cosplays of like current movies that are coming out. Like don't advertise for anything. Yeah. But everybody's so aware of it right now. And I think at the end of the day, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. We all want to do the right thing, but yeah. this ain't no movie. <laughs> Just for everyone at home, if you've never done a Lego set before, it comes with an instruction book. It usually has like a breakdown of the Lego set, what inspired it, and then the step-by-step -step instructions. Have you done a Lego set before? I have. You know what's really funny is I've had like pretty much every <laughs> recent ex I've ever had has had like a familial gift for it. It's like your big gift this year is this Lego set. Yeah. And then it's always like the day after winter holiday thing where it's like up. sit down and do it. Oh, and so, <laughs> oh, so oh I no, know. I mean, yes. that usually comes a little later. So I've done it. It's been like a big family thing always where it's like, let's get your brother in here and yeah. let's do that. Yeah. Oh, so. That's yeah. That's really sweet. What's, I, um, that, what's that like? <laughs> Normal I, familial stuff. Sorry. No, no, exactly. Like, I feel like um, my family always used to play Monopoly, which would destroy oh, yeah. our already shaky foundation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. My family would do um, Yahtzee. Mm -hmm. And my, my father was like an unreasonably lucky man with things like that. So yeah. it would always just be like, oh, another six sixes. And you're just like, oh, neat. <laughs> I'm nine. Like, I don't know what to... <sighs> I don't know how to metagame Yahtzee, but okay. I just bet my tricycle. <laughs> Grandpa's riding it around. Dude, that'd be funny. A corpse on a tricycle, Sarah? <laughs> oh, Insane. Okay. So here's the thing. Yeah. I love the design of this game. Mm -hmm. I think they do a great job building the world that they have. I have myself not played it, and I'll tell you why. Um, I purchased this game a while back, yeah. and... Uh, it was like an Amazon whatever sale, happy prime, happy capitalism day. Yeah. Give us money, but a little bit less. And so I was like, I bet. Um, so I got two games at the same time, played the other one first, and then my friend got Final Fantasy 15. Uh, you may know Shane from Smosh. Yes. Yeah. So he got Final Fantasy 15 at the same time, which I wanted to play. And he was like, this ain't the game for me. And I was, and I think I'm going to get that Horizon game. And I was like, oh, I have that. And I'm going to play Final Fantasy eventually. Do you just want to trade? Yeah. And we did. And then I never played this. Oh, yeah. I see. So that's a really cool, riveting story to no, start it, your show. It is. Like, I mean, I was like, how did you know it was wonderfully made if you've never played it? Well, I do um, a lot of voice acting for games and stuff. So I try to um, stay at least aware of what's going on, what games are being made, what's popular and why. Mm -hmm. And also, like, what the vocal style is. Because if yeah. you think about it from cartoons, like... SpongeBob's real different from Adventure Time, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, unless you have just naturally that understanding of what's going on by playing it, then mm -hmm. you don't, you don't book. <laughs> so, yeah. 
Yeah. No, I understand. Yeah. What is the last thing you voice acted for, if you can say? Or how about... Ooh, okay. I don't know if you're promoting it, though. No, uh, uh, interactive things are um, struck from the strike agreement. Okay. So that's actually the fun thing. Um, not the fun thing, because, you know, I do support the SAG strike and the WGA mm -hmm. um, as a member of sag After. But there are two things that are stricken from voice acting are interactive, which is gaming, and dubbing, which is like anime. Oh. And those are the things I do. So... Um, <laughs> Right now, I'm I'm uh, in a show. Uh, well, I still can't advertise the show. I can just do it. Yeah. I'm in an anime. That's all I'll say. Look at my socials if you care. It's my first anime, and I'm a lead in it, and it's really exciting because I've been wanting to do it for a while. Um, but game wise, I just had a mobile game come out. I can talk about that. Yeah. It's like it's one of those gotcha games where you like summon characters, mm -hmm. and I'm like one of the hundred characters, and I recorded it like three years ago in peak pandemic. Yeah over the course of like an hour. And it was just like randomly, I got an email being like, hey, the game's going up. I'm like, the what? Oh, okay, yeah, sure. What was the character? Like, what did they do? Um, he is a little devil guy. Um, mm -hmm. He looks like the kind of like goatee having, real schemey mm -hmm. kind of guy. Um, and when I auditioned for it, he had like a deep voice and a little bit of an accent to it. And then when I got in there, the client um, who was calling in from China was like, yeah, we like what you're doing, but don't do the accent and don't go so deep. And then I'm like, oh, so just like a guy. Yeah. You just want like a guy. And <laughs> And they were like, yeah, you know, like a guy. And I'm like, okay. So I still haven't heard the finished product. I haven't, you know, downloaded the game or anything. Um, but that was, that was fun. <laughs> what if they like made your character like a big doofus? <laughs> like you play the game. <laughs> <laughs> That's little Dimmy Dumpus. He's the worst one to summon. <laughs> Everything hurts and he's always crying. <laughs> What's this idiot going to say today? <laughs> hey, <laughs> <God>. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we're rich because we don't work hard enough or maybe we're not rich because we don't work hard enough like, no that's not what I believe why do they <laughs> say that oh god that's funny I also just had a game come out for uh, VR which was really cool where I played like a werewolf knight mm -hmm. um, and that was really sick and I speak a little German and they wanted him to have like a German affectation and I got to save their butts with like a translation error really? <laughs> yeah and that was fun oh hell yeah Basically, it was pretty well translated for like the moments that were German. Like he had a German accent and mm -hmm. he wasn't German speaking, except there would be just a couple words here, here and there. So he was a werewolf and his, the land he came from was like the land of nails and tails or something like that. That was the, what they wanted it to say. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually, I can't even find the first piece. It's killing me. Um, I said I'd be good, but I, I can't find it. Um, and basically there was one attack that I did where I screamed out this thing and I was like, Schwanznagel! Yeah. And I was like, hey, pump the, uh, real quick, I felt good about that take. What did you want, what do you think I'm yeah. saying? And they were like, oh, it's like nails and tails, like Schwanz is tail, Nagel is nail. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, and that's what? And they're like, it's the place you're from. I'm like, cool, 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 cool. Um, Super down to say that line if that's what you want. Uh, but also Schwanz like colloquially never means tail. Okay. It's like in the same way, like, Another word for rooster never means rooster. Oh yeah. So literally it was like wiener nails. And I was like, after screaming that, then it registered and I was like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Um, so that was fun and different. <laughs> that is fun and different. Yeah. Also, were you being literal about being on the first step? Yeah, I can't find it. I'm looking for a dark gray piece with three <laughs> little doodads and it's just, Ooh. Sarah, it ain't happening. Dude, I had so much faith in you because I've already got, well, I mean, you're also talking. People don't realize how hard it is to talk and, and keep going. Maybe that's why families buy it. They're like, look, <laughs> we don't have a good relationship. You don't want to connect. We don't want to talk. <laughs> Please just build your toy. Um, Sarah, real quick. Yeah. Wh where's your first step? Because damn. I already did it. Where did you find that little piece? What do you mean? What is the, okay, so I'm sorry. This this little thing, what does this mean to you? Wow. Yeah. That's. Horizon is canceled, dude. Is it not in the bag, in the, well, Wouldn't it be wild if the first piece was the only one that was missing? You gotta relax your eyes, it's like I spy. Oh, it's right there. We will. Next to that white piece on the far right. Wait, no. No. Did you drop it? I don't think I pop lock and dropped it. Sorry to, I mean, I guess show is canceled and I'll go home. All the bets are off, guys. I guess. I mean, I'm more disappointed that I disappointed you. I found it! Sarah, I found it. There we go. All right, competition starting now. Three, two, one, go. Exactly. And this is an over a thousand piece set. Yeah, well, oops. It's like um when you watch Hot Ones and the guest is like dying after the first yeah. oh, the chicken God. wing. I'm yeah. like sweet spirit. Mm -hmm. Would you do that? Really? I mean, 
outside of the like career aspects of yeah duh you're gonna be on hot ones yeah like how do you think you would fare in that moment um okay so i know that i would the it would be the anxiety of it beforehand more than anything oh yeah sure so, yeah i would take an ativan and a beta blocker get my heart sure. rate to around 30. uh-huh so oh you thought about this <laughs> yes great so i mean i can withstand the pain i just if i feel like i have like any sort of anxiety in my chest i yeah. just give up and start vomiting sure <laughs> <laughs> Which might actually uh, help or hinder you in this scenario. Yeah, like, okay, so I've watched Hot Ones. None of the guests have vomited on screen. They've, Not on screen, no. Yeah, so I mean, like, would is does, is vomiting cheating? Like, if I went on Hot Ones and after every <laughs> wing, I just made myself throw up. You know what? I think if you're, like, yelling at Dua Lipa, they're like, you're cheating, you're cheating! While she's, yeah. like, throwing up on your show, I don't think you get to do your show anymore. <laughs> so I think, Put it back in! <laughs> get it in there! The audience is gonna eat this! <laughs> I don't think... Yeah, I think that's probably the last episode of Hot Ones, um, which, like, respect. You're going out with a bang. I don't know. Would you do Hot Ones? I mean, besides, like, for your career, sure. but, like, would you be afraid to tap out? So I think I would be afraid to tap out, and I feel like I'd be able to do it. I'm not the best with spicy foods, and I do mm. have a a, a skin condition that can be activated by it. Mm -hmm. But I think if I got my shot for it like the day prior, mm -hmm. I'd be like, let's go. My body is swirling with all these meds. Let's <laughs> let's do the thing. Okay, hell yeah. Where <laughs> do you think that you would start to struggle on the hot sauce scale? I love spicy food, but for me, it's all based in like flavor. Yeah. Like if something is spicy and that adds to it, great, super down. But mm -hmm. when things are like spicy for the sake of spicy, hate that so yeah. i think i would probably have a really hard time with um the the bomb where they, like everybody's just like oh that's a vile flavor yeah and it's hot like if it's bitter i think i would just probably take my ball and go home mm -hmm. in, in so many words um can't do bitter i can but i am a very like food adventurous person mm -hmm. and enjoy new flavors and eating weird stuff so who knows? No, oh, yeah, exactly. I feel the same way. I'm trying to think. Um, I probably tap out at De Bomb because that's where everyone seems to be like, yeah, dude, I'm yes. dying. Yeah, like, why? <laughs> but I mean, um, that I mean, but it's a successful formula, you know. Yes. But what if like your daily job at Smosh, you just gotta wake up and go eat hot wings all day? I mean, that's not too far off base. <laughs> really? Like, I mean, so we're getting a lot more streamlined. Um, I, I don't, I'm sure you heard the like news about Anthony coming back. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, anyone at home who doesn't know, the channel I work for had two original founders. They uh, ended up doing their own things for a while. The one that left is coming back, and it's great. Mm -hmm. um, that's the Reader's Digest version. So ordinarily, like when filming with Smosh, like if you didn't have a hand in producing something, it could be literally anything. Like you could show up and people are like, hey, today you're gonna learn how to like train a bee. And you're just like, okay, mm -hmm. like you're great, let's do it. So like we do have a format where it, it involves eating strange things. And it's usually like based on the like, ha ha, look at how weird the thing you ate was that you didn't expect. Yeah. Um, but almost without fail, I'll take a bite and be like, oh, this is really good. Yeah. And then you'll see the person who made it just go like, come on. And Damien, that's a clump of dirt. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But the thing is, dirt is minerals and you need those <laughs> in your body for health. You sound like one of those people, like if someone tried to make fun of you, you'd like over explain like how they like made fun of you. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> like, like someone's like, you have a really big head and you'll be like, well, that means I'm smart. Like my yeah. cranium is... Uh, but you know what I mean? And I'm not saying yeah. it's a bad thing. I'm, I'm like, that's uh, like, yeah. No, I don't take it as a bad thing at all. I think it's honestly a win. Um, I can hold a lot more cranial fluid <laughs> with my big ass head. Um, and uh, honestly, as long as I don't have like hydrocephaly or whatever, I'm I'm probably very healthy. Hydrocephaly, what is that? Yeah, that's when your head is full of water, oh. brain water to be a science man. Um. <laughs> <laughs> are you... I was gonna say like are you man sweating that, but I. Didn't I think know you. Anything. I think you asked <laughs> what it was. <laughs> I am. I. I try not to mansplain, but I also think that um, the line between mansplaining and neurodivergent like yeah info dump is is a very thin line. Mm -hmm. Info dump to me conjures such a like a visceral like I don't like info dump mm, like yeah. I don't it's like, yeah. <laughs> like a splorch yeah. <laughs> and you're like oh bionicle does sound cool like. <laughs> When's the last time you played with Bionicles? Oh God, too long, Sarah. <laughs> too long. I saw a preview. They're making a game. They're making a game for the modern day. It's kind of crazy. I think Lego is the thing keeping Bionicle alive. 
because there's such yeah, a, yeah there's like yeah. so many bionicle not bionicles oh uh, no ninjago is what's keeping oh yeah. got it i was about to i mean i didn't call that out but i was like yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you're wrong they, they own they own bionicle <laughs> <laughs> like i think it is up to them Sorry, I, was thinking, I was thinking ninjago because i haven't like granted sure. i'm not like watching a lot of I feel like that's for children. I mean, the line these days is so blurred between what is for children and not because our generation grew up and is like, hey, we actually still like video games and cartoons. Can we do that? And it's like, yeah, yeah no one's going to stop you. Like, oh, yeah, we cool. say that as we build Legos. Yeah, right. If you had access to Wallace or Gromit, would you take a bite out of them? Um, okay, I, I thought you meant them as like living beings, but you're talking about like the clay beasts. <laughs> yes. Like literal clay. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Yes. I like that sense texture in my brain i'm just like i'm mad that that's not actively happening in the moment no exactly i feel like it'd be like a really doughy bread like yes. undercooked bread and i feel like sometimes things get stuck in your teeth and it's immediate like turn off to the experience and you're like oh this would have been such a nice bite but everything's in my teeth yeah i feel like this would like engulf every part of your mouth including the between teeth and yeah. you would just be like this is my life now and i'm chill with it submit to the void <laughs> yes no, exactly, dude. Oh my gosh. You know, Sarah, I, you're okay. <laughs> um, well, we're both very ill. I'm also on step two. Nice. Okay. <laughs> oh, got it. Damn, Sarah. I brought the wrong kind of tism to this fight. No, I was going to say all but one of my guests that I've had on are autistic. And nice. every time I like say what step I'm at, they all get nervous. Oh, sure. Well, you know. It's just my, I like freaking out my guests. It's not even a competition because, I mean, it's just arguably harder to, like, I, I'm asking you questions because there's like a natural flow of conversation. But sure. you answer, thinking and answering while also building and looking. It's just a whole. Yeah. It's a whole thing. I mean, honestly, I'm having a great time. This is um, light work. And I think had I not had such trouble finding that first bit, I mm -hmm. would have been just fine. No, yeah. Um, I was definitely a little bit kneecapped by that whole experience. But as long as you in the comments know that yeah, and don't judge me too harshly, I think that's great. No, yeah. It's like throwing up at the starting line. Yeah. <laughs> and if anything, if you see, okay. So a lot of people think about that as like a negative, right? Yeah. I say, use it to your advantage, turn the other direction. The law of <laughs> it science- propels you. Propels you, yeah. <laughs> There's gotta be an equal and opposite reaction. So anything you're chunking out for sure has to like push you forward too. I threw up so hard. <laughs> Blasted <laughs> in 50 meters. That is, you know what? I think I would watch the Olympics again. <laughs> I think I would just be like, yeah, I mean, people are now using bodily functions in ways that we never even thought of. Yeah. And, and I'm here for just, it. The government harnesses the power of our throats <laughs> to build a rocket. Elon, the, the, <laughs> the doofy man. I'm not going to say I can't cuss, but. I mean, you can cuss, just like no, no really bad words. I was just going to call him a dumbass. Yeah, that's. Which I think is probably an apt cuss. It's pretty casual. It's a cash cuss. Mm-hmm. I think, what is your favorite non-curse curse word? Uh, can you give me an example of a non-curse for yours? Crud. Crud. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. I think um, heck is really funny to mm -hmm. put anywhere where heck doesn't belong. Yeah. Like, I'm mad as a heck. <laughs> like, oh, heck. Yeah. Or I, I often say H-E double hell. Yeah. That's a fun one because it makes you think. And then people are like, he hell hell. I'm like, yep. <laughs> I know what I said. I think um, one that I really think is amazing is crap. Because like crap is great. If like a grown man just is like I'm mad as crap, <laughs> you know, what the crap? <laughs> it's just like why are you saying that? Sometimes you just gotta like release it. Like I'm imagining this like middle aged man trying not to curse around their kids, and they've just got like that forehead vein, yeah. just screaming at you. It's like I'm mad as crap. I'm like, trust me, your children are still very uncomfortable right now. Yeah, yeah. Regardless of what you've said. Oh, I hate when people yell in public. Oh, it's awful. I know. I can't imagine. When's the last time you yelled in public? I don't know if I ever have. When you're scared, do you scream or yell? I think I would have to say probably yell because I have more of like a, are we defining this on like tonality? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, th I think I would yell because it's a bit more of like, oh, like not like yeah. a, ah, you know. Yeah. Oh, that sounds like you're going to evolve into like a very cool old man. I appreciate that. Thank you. I'm working on it. Mm -hmm. Got, I'm restoring antiques all the time. Are you really? I am. Yeah. I sounded like someone. Are you really? Are you really? <laughs> Do tell. What's the last thing you restored? Um, I'll tell you what, the thing I'm working on right now mm -hmm. is a, um, an antique chess table. Um, 
I know this cool old man, um, and I, I love him. He's really cool. Um, he his whole thing is he will like clean out estate sales and make like a blanket offer on whatever they've got left and just take it. Then he sells it after he fixes it up, or maybe he sells it like raw if he doesn't have you know time. And like we became friends over the past couple of years. Um, and so like sometimes I'll go and be like, hey, I'm picking up this cheap lamp that I needed, and then he'll be like, hey, I got something for you. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, all right, man, like what do you what do you think? And he's like, hey, I, this is a perfect thing for you. So come come back here real quick, and I'll go past his gate. And um, he'll say something like, okay, so check it out. I know it needs a little work. And I'll see like, okay, so this one specifically, I don't know why I'm saying this as like a generality. Yeah. This happened. Um, he had this mahogany chess table in three pieces with a pearl inlay chess board as the top. Um, absolutely gorgeous. And I've always wanted something like it since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, but like as a kid, what are you going to do with like, oh, I want a pearl chess board. <laughs> Um, you know, so he was like, all right, so, you know, listen, I was like, yeah, how much is this going to be? And he's like, well, you know, and he starts to like fumble around it and I'm looking at it. I'm like, okay, the paint on the side, it looked like they tried to fix it with like Crayola paint. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, you're going to have to use some, uh, some stain on that. And I was like, yeah, and this part's on level. He's like, yeah, you're going to have to tighten this and do that. Look, if I do it myself, it's going to be about 300 bucks. Um, if I, you know, give it to you today and you take it off my hands, I can give it to you for a hundred. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I'll do a hundred hundred bucks for a thing I've wanted since I was a kid. Like, yeah. is it a fiscally wise choice? Hell no. It doesn't benefit me at all, but I want it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did that. And so I'm working on it right now. Oh yeah. What's the part that seems to be the issue? Um, so I have to sort of go around all the sides because it's clearly taken some damage in transit and I need to sort of restain the sides. Mm-hmm. But since the damage is mostly relegated to the sides, I don't have to worry about matching the color too well because it can be its own thing. Mm-hmm. Um, the base as well is sort of sitting on this huge like stone sphere and then there's three legs coming off of it. And the legs themselves, I think, are a little bit wonky. So I'm just going to probably have to do some stuff underneath. Honestly, it's a matter of finding the time and finding a little bit of space because it's a whole ass table and that involves chairs and that involves like, you know, am I actually going to have people over to play chess? You like chess? Um. I mean, like, it's one of those things that if it's, like, you know, right in front of me at the table at Cracker Barrel. Sure. Like, hell yeah, like, give me a piece. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, I um, I mean, I do like it, but I, I don't think I would just wake up one day and pursue a game. Sure. Mm-hmm. I used to play with the, uh, I actually still do play with the uh, old Smosh CEO that was there before Anthony came back. So that was nice. Did you, like, were you good at it? I do okay. I don't know how to judge myself because I used to mostly play with my dad and my dad was like, I know everybody's like, my dad is a genius and really strong. Like, well, not everybody, but like Mm -hmm. a lot of people would be. My dad, I think, was actually an extremely, extremely smart person borderlining, you know, on genius. Mm -hmm. Um, I also think he had the tism. Um, (laughs) I talked to my mom about that recently. She's like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) How did you do this uh, situation, by the way? Me too. I did, and it's but it's not it's not popping in. Am I doing? It's like do I just have to sort of go for it? Um, I. Show, I mean, it looks like this. That is so weird under the lights you have right now. It's like mm, mm, okay, uh, uh, yeah, no, I definitely can should I be doing it? the thing that you're. Uh, yes, yes, you can. I'm just I think worried about popping it in the wrong way. No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh. Counter question to you while you're doing that. Yeah. When was the last time you were at a Cracker Barrel? Um, when I was at a... Oh, gosh. Probably like six, seven hours ago. Really? You're missing blues. Oh, yeah, you're right. That's why. The smartest person I know. Thank you. I'm your father. Um, <laughs> no, I uh, no, I wasn't at Cracker Barrel today. I think I just... I go a lot because, like, it's really good food. Mm. Great environment. Are you from the South? I'm from South Carolina. Okay, I'm from Georgia. Really? Yeah. What part? Uh, Peachtree City. It's about an hour south of Atlanta. Um, but I was born in Germany, raised in Georgia. So I, I definitely have an affinity for Southern food, even if it's, you know, just okay Southern food, you know? No, yeah. I um, Well, don't ever say that <laughs> Cracker Barrel is just okay. Okay. That's wrong and demented. <laughs> and you're being I'm right. also demented, so yeah. it's on brand. I, um, I went to college in Virginia, but I am from South Carolina. Okay. And I lived in Greenville, South Carolina, which is an hour. Yeah. Two hours to the right of Atlanta. Yeah. I think I've stopped there a few times on like road trips for like auditions and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That's it, wild. 
It's a great little city. I would advise moving there if you're straight and have no plans to uh, do anything else with your life. <laughs> <laughs> that was the biggest asterisk you've ever put. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know you that well, but. Do that. you think that there are people in the world who are like, I have literally no plans for my life? Yeah. Uh, like, but I mean, like, say it out loud. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Cool. I mean, I think that's something you find a lot for our generation and younger mm -hmm. because everybody is so disillusioned with how things are right now. You know, you're told like, get married, grow up and buy a house and do all the normal things and everything will be fine if you go to college. And then we're all seeing like, hey, that's demonstrably untrue. Yeah. And so now people are like looking at their lives and thinking like, well, what the hell am I supposed to do with this? And so I, I actually have a lot of friends. Um, some of them are back home. Some of them are just still in LA, you know, mm -hmm. but they're, they all voice like, yeah, I really don't know what I'm up to. Like, I'd love to do something. And yeah. I know I'm the talk, clock's a ticking, but it's a, it's a weird time. Maybe it's always been a weird time. It's, it's a really weird time. I, I mean, it's just the internet that is like sh shaken, shooken, shook everything up. Shook it. Yeah. Now, like people are sharing information being like, Hey guys, we shouldn't all be doing this all the time. It's like a waste yeah. of life. And then everyone's like, Holy crap. I just woke up. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I came online mm -hmm. quite literally. Yep. My sister and I were having that oh, sorry, uh, conversation today where, you know, she was, she's still back in Georgia. She was calling me on her way home and just expressing her frustration with the way things are. And, you know, she had brought up like people making fun of billionaires uh, being squished uh, like a Capri Sun. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, she's like, I don't know why everybody's defending them. You know, you know, I, I, I don't think I call me crazy. And this is a this is an intense perspective. I know. But like. I don't think you can be a billionaire if you're, you know, not taking advantage of people. And I was just mm -hmm. like, ah, oh, that's a radical opinion you have. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Crazy. But yes, I also agree. And so does everyone. <laughs> no, exactly. I feel like where people, the dilemma with uh, making fun of billionaires being crushed is that people don't know the difference between morals and ethics. Mm, good point. It's not morally wrong to be like billionaires should be crushed in submarines. Yeah. Ethically. Mm -hmm. However, it is. Mm -hmm. But I think what what constitution are you living by? Sure. Also, I'm confused. Uh, is that a, is that a flip flop? Is it morally mm -hmm. strange versus ethically fine? I don't know. No, are it's you the right? Trolley problem. Is that the trolley problem? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that well. I never did philosophy or anything like that. I just <laughs> I I think I always got the definition confused, and I think that has finally come to a head in this exact moment. I think, okay, so ethics deal with, okay. like, external regulation, you know, okay. and then morals are your internal, how you internally, like, choose to move throughout the world and what you think is correct. Thank you for teaching me that. So, like, people are, that. like, it's not actually the trolley problem, but, like, it, like ethics, like, it's not okay to, like, kill someone, but, like, morally, you could be, like, it's okay to kill someone if they, like, hit me first. Okay, got it. Yeah. I think I, I think my brain has always swapped those and I think I am I got a lot of thinking to do. Watch me just <laughs> I know I'm very confident in what I just said, but yeah. like there's gonna be people who are like, actually, well Well of course it's the internet. Yeah. But also like just to be clear, this isn't that moment where I like think I'm right and I'm like, Oh, I've never heard it that way you, before. Like I'm literally seriously like I actually think I got them confused. So yeah. thank you. Oh no, you're you're good. Yeah. And if I'm wrong, then I'm sorry. Hey, you don't have to apologize <laughs> to me. Apologize to everyone out. No, I'm kidding. No, I think everyone who's watches this um, of are of autistic mind. Nice. And so you got the tiz -riz. they feel. I I also just recently got diagnosed with autism. Nice, congratulations. Mm -hmm, How do you I, feel? I not much different. Yeah. It's just like um, right. it's just like yeah, because like I mean, no grown person is usually this obsessed with Legos. <laughs> And like yeah. has a hard time like deciphering some emotions. You know, I feel yeah. disconnected from a lot of emotions. Yeah, I mm. I can I feel that. Yeah. yeah, my particular brand is the uh, pattern recognition stuff usually. Oh yeah. Yeah, like I can. Um, it's not always emotions, but like if someone's acting differently, I'm like, ooh, they're gonna tell me something big, and then if they can't get it out, I'll be like, can I write down what I think it is? Like I had this happen recently, and I won't betray the person's trust, but like yeah. someone had something important to tell me, but had a hard time, and I was like, hey, I noticed three times you stopped yourself from saying an important thing. Yeah. What if I wrote down on my phone what I think you're about to say? Uh huh. And then when you say it, I'm going to flip over my phone and you're going to see that I'm on the same page. And when it's on the same page, maybe you'll feel safe. And uh, that exact thing happened. And oh, it yeah. was so it's just handy like that. Oh, I yeah, I, I understand. I feel like 
I do feel, yes, I feel like I recognize like a lot of patterns in people. Like, mm -hmm. I feel kind of like a jackass every time I say this, but like whenever one of my, whenever one of my friends is like, I found out this person's a narcissist. I'm all, I'm always like, I know. Yeah. Like yeah. you just, I'm, I feel like you could look at them oh, and be like, yes. Yeah. You know, Sarah, if I, there, there's some stuff I shouldn't say on camera, but like, if I could tell you right now, like that exact situation happening where like years ago I brought up to people like, Hey, I think this person's a little off and people are like, I don't see it. Yeah. And now it's like the most come to a head terrible situation mm -hmm. and people are like you were right and i was like well i didn't want to be right i just want everyone to be safe and yeah you know, no exactly i um yeah yeah wait i was just blanking on what i was gonna say something about the tism oh yeah we all have the tism here so <laughs> we all have the tism here if i get something wrong they'll explain it to me sure <laughs> it's like group think great or like hive mind sorry i'll still yes and you so you have a background in improv? Yes, I mm -hmm. do. I um, when I was in Georgia, I taught improv for a while while also taking classes. I took classes from like fourteen to eighteen, and then at sixteen, I was like an assistant teacher for the teen class, and then I was a main stage performer at this place from like seventeen and eighteen, and then I moved out here. And then uh, directed an improv troupe, and for the brief time I was in college. Um, but yeah, that's that's very much my thing. And I also get the sense that you are very much a prover. I I love improv, as like weird as that sounds. It doesn't sound at all. <laughs> well, I mean, to the audience. <laughs> oh, got it. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Like, you better support Sarah. <laughs> no, I, I love improv. I In high school, I, like, I entered this competition and I won like a couple free classes at UCLA. And I lived in Virginia at the that's time. so cool. So I like did some improv there and that's a college credit of mine. And then I've done, I feel dirty. I've done improv before, but no, no I'm mainly stand up now. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know I'm not saying improv is like a, it's, I can riff, you sure. know? I'm just also not a physical person. Like I feel disconnected yeah. from my body. I understand that. And I yeah. think there is this expectation with improv to like really make that space work count. I just like it as an exercise for the brain. Like. I'm, you know, we're doing a and d show now on Smosh and it's very much my baby. Mm -hmm. um, and like, I was in an interview the other day and they like, they made it to this town of like frog people and you know, they, the frog people all have titles. So they had to meet them and you know, be like, who are you? Like, I'm such and such, bringer of the such and such. And, yeah. and they were like, so how big was the list of frog names and titles that you had? Like along with the voices that you could mix and match. I went, <laughs> and they're like, well, you didn't make a list. I was like, Bleh. and so I just sort of made up things on the fly. And like that to me is, fun improv but you don't have to like take every class like no yeah you know. that is i feel like that's like the literal definition of improv yeah. like you didn't plan really like much ahead of time yeah and there's like something to be said about the actual skill set of it and the in the training in the technique of it like mm -hmm. that's great in the same way that like you can lift something heavy in a, in your backyard or you can be a power lifter and learn the like proper lifting techniques but it doesn't mean that you can't lift heavy things if you haven't taken a class in powerlifting. oh yeah no, no no i always encourage people to take classes i take classes all the time same all right encourage it i don't do it <laughs> <laughs> no um i did like a like neon bending like i did pottery and neon bending that's wild i know the museum of neon art in uh burbank you can take a class there that's straight up avatar right there but it was kind of sad because it, i didn't realize it was a valentine's day class last year and i was single at the time oh no and so but there were people there like trying to save their marriage and mm -hmm. there were like some like really artsy like beautiful couples and i was there was a man like burned his wife like really bad what and yeah and um she was fine i think at the end of the day but I do encourage people. You can call that fine. <laughs> it's mangled from head to yeah. toe. But no, um, she was fine, I think. Test that unconditional love. <laughs> yes. But uh, I, I really encourage people to take classes because I have like ADHD and mm -hmm. I always thought I was like stupid in schools. I'm sorry. And that's just because there was the pressure of that. But yeah. with classes as an adult, you can just take a class and like leave in the middle. Yeah. Like, you just straight up get up and walk out. Exactly. You're good to go. You can burn yourself with some <laughs> molten glass. Burn someone else's husband. Like, why not? Yes, exactly. It, Wait, no, what I was going to say about um, the improv thing being like disconnected from my body, I was talking to one of my friends who does stand up, and she was like, I have a solution for that. You should take a clowning class. <gasps> Clowning's great. Yeah. I have you done one? You need clowning? I, need, I got a clown guy for you. <laughs> what do you, wait, you, like a clown? No, I got a clown guy. 
so he what does he do he, okay so he's born human but he acts as a clown yes he's he's a, a hybrid if you will born. um he's born human he doesn't have the blood for it but they've still accepted him in, as their own yeah which is wild because they only take one a year um yeah it's a whole thing oh shit well i mean i they just said that like if you don't want to take a dance class you could take a clowning class and then become like more aware of your body and like more physical humor that you need for like improv sort of stuff. Cause yeah. stand up, I'm not really moving around much. Sure. That makes sense. Yes. I will say, uh, since we're on the topic of tism yeah. on the T of T, mm -hmm. um, I learned recently an issue that I've had forever is tied to the tiz. What? Um, my hips have always been extremely like tight and immobile. Oh yeah. In some, you know, pretty specific ways. And I was always wondering where that came from. And in reality, it is an autism thing. Like, I think when we're nervous socially, like we hold our bodies in, we don't end up developing those hip muscles. Yeah. And like, when I learned that was a thing, it blew my mind. Cause like, I did a lot of martial arts as a kid and I was never great at it. And I was always confused as to like, why can't I just do this basic stuff? And mm -hmm. you know, it was always a problem. Um, and now lo and behold, Lindsay Lohan behold, um, that was it. That's incredible. I mean, do you have like stretches that you do for your, I think it's like, isn't it trauma is also stored in the hips? Oh God, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, that tracks. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, um, I got one of those like, uh, I almost said machine guns. God, um, those <laughs> massage guns. There we go. Um, like <laughs> that, that pain is that overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, I got a machine gun. <laughs> try to end it. I just can't die. <laughs> yeah. Is the weird thing. <laughs> Um, it's this damn talisman passed down in my family for generations. Uh, but no, I, it, it really helps me like loosen things up and then I stretch a bit and it's helpful, but like I could never dance or anything. And now I'm starting to like just physically express myself a little more and it's working out. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, Oh yeah. Sarah question for you. Yeah. Did you have this little gap here? Uh, Did you have that little gap layer? Yes. And I think, okay. wait, no, I think it, yeah. Okay. Wait, no. Let me see. No, wait, yes. Oh, I see what it is. Wow. Thanks, Sarah. Sorry. Embarrassing. <laughs> Sorry. What if I... Uh, no, I would never shame a guest. Unless you did... Like, they... And I, I don't know what a guest would have to do for me to be like, what the hell is wrong with you? Um... I think I, I receive that kind of humor well and can yes and it. Okay. It's because I'm I'm just so great that it's always punching down... Or punching up, rather. And I'm just like, yeah, that's fine. You can do that. Okay, hell Yeah. I am. Um, what would it take for some, like, for you to tell someone what the hell is wrong with you? Uh, I feel like I do that pretty often. Really? Yeah. Well, again, I work at Smosh. Um, oh yeah. And I am. I produce for the games department as well as being like on camera talent for it. Mm -hmm. um, and I love it. And I love everybody there. They're so extremely talented. But most people are um, really talented improvisers, and then the gaming stuff comes second for them. Yeah. And so. Um, I always do this playfully and with love, but I do have moments where I'm just like, hey, quick question. Were your parents siblings? Yeah. Because like, it'll be like a one page thing of rules where it's like, draw a card and place a card. And someone will be like, all right, so I draw a card and draw a card, then I draw a card. I'm like, nope. Yeah. Where'd you get that? And so I, again, I lean into it as a joke. Mm -hmm. I'm just goofing. But yeah, it, it, uh, well, I'll have choice words sometimes. Okay. I get that. <laughs> Sorry to everyone out there who's inbred, but uh, <laughs> I feel like I can say that one. I feel like that one's okay to say. Are you are you inbred? Uh, no, I, but my heart is full of hate <laughs> for those who are different than me. So I just don't. I'm like it's whatever. My heart is full of fluid. <laughs> oh, nice! <laughs> you have uh, cardiocephaly. No, hydro. I don't know. It's not cephaly. Cephaly is brain. Um, we're full circle. I've made a silly. I've made a goof. I've made a gaff. I think it's time I own up to it. What? I just put stuff in the wrong place. I'm gonna get this sort of out. The incompetence continues. Um, wait, so what was the mistake that you made? Oh, I uh, placed one thing, as, as I often do on these large fields of Legos, I just mm -hmm. placed one thing a little bit too far right. Yeah. Um, never placed something too far left, strangely enough, but too far right for sure. Well, are you left-handed? Mm -mm. So then that would check out. You, I'm actually a little offended that you'd ask that. I don't- You look like you could be left-handed. That's even worse. Really? I don't I don't consort with the devil, Sarah. That's too big of a power to invite in. Not I'm left-handed. I should have asked. That's on me. I didn't ask. No, I'm totally kidding. Oh, good. Thank God. I would have, after throwing up, I would have had to go. <laughs> I would have to go home. I sure. write with my feet. <laughs> if you were trying to sign your name, what would be worse, signing with your foot or your left hand? <laughs> it's obviously your foot. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know about that one, sir. So you've heard of this video game, right? I have, yeah. 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 I mean, and I even have a voice actor friend in it. Like, it's it's a very well-known game, and I'm very excited to, you know, have this. And honestly, it's, uh, at this point, now I have an extra excuse to play it. I think the issue with this game, and the issue that it's always had, is it always releases concurrently with something else huge. Mm -hmm. So it always gives itself kind of a losing battle. So it's very popular and it's a very great game and it is like critically very well received, but at the same time, people end up missing out on it, myself included. Mm -hmm. um, this like Horizon Forbidden West that this is from, I forget what came out at the exact same time, but it was like, come on. Like it might've even yeah. been Zelda. That's an awful lot of confidence in a, in a game that isn't Zelda. <laughs> That is pretty big, because I've heard of Zelda. Yeah. Zelda's heard of you. No, exactly. I loved um, Ratchet and Clank. That's great. Oh, I love Ratchet and Clank. But They're so fun. But that's the only one I've ever played, so I feel like... Uh, we did. I did like a podcast episode last year on uh, Minecraft. Oh, sure. And I just... Everything I read from the research, I was like, I have no idea. But I don't want to be like one sure. of those people who's like, video games, sport ball. You know, you know, yeah, I feel that. Yeah. I think, you know what? You like what you like. I yeah. think this, the, the thing for video games with me is the same thing with anime when people are like, what should I watch? Like, what do, what would I like? I'm like, well, you, what kind of stuff do you like already? Because yeah. there's so many different, it's just a medium for storytelling and having an, an experience. But genre wise, the sky's the limit. Mm -hmm. So Ratchet and Clank is great. I love that one. It's a lot of fun. And I don't think I'd, I wouldn't judge anybody for not being down for games. But yeah. Is there anything that you've seen that you're like, oh, that looks interesting, but like, I don't know if I could do this or. I really like The Sims. Oh, that's great. Those are fun. But that's not like a. It's not like what you're talking about. Um, it is though, but that's, that is, that's kind of my point is yeah. like, it doesn't have to like have guns and explosions to be a video game. Well, I also just feel like I don't have the space on my computer, you know, for the Sims specifically. Entirely fair. I like everyone's like, it burned my lap. You know? <laughs> oh no. I'm infertile. <laughs> so when you stream, like, what do you do? That's a great question. Um, so I usually stream all kinds of games. And the fun thing is because it's not super focused on being like a pro gamer because I'm not we're it's pretty accessible to people who don't generally have that as a special interest mm -hmm. so we end up getting a lot of people who are like yeah I've never played games before but like I'm excited to watch you play and be so excited about it and now I'm also brought into it yeah and that's kind of my goal like the focus is on conversation but we'll either do really intense games like Dark Souls and like that's one of my favorites um and we'll do it like without armor and like add a challenge to it. Yeah. Or we'll do anything Nintendo. We'll, we do spooky Thursdays for like horror games because mm -hmm. I love horror movies and stuff. You stream quite a bit and you work full time at Smosh. I do. And then I also voice act. Oh my God. I uh, don't sleep very much, but I'm happy. Well, that is uh, just another reason to take your Vivans every day or your Adderall. I, you know what? Vivans, uh, messed me, messed me right. It was great for like two weeks. And then yeah. it was just like, now that we have you. Time to ruin your life. Wait, and, what happened? Um, I got like a little bit dizzy mm -hmm. um, and started feeling like a little sick and the come down from it every night was really unpleasant. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just couldn't really mess with it anymore. I ended up getting on Dexedrine, which worked great as well. Mm -hmm. um, but then unfortunately Dexedrine, there is a shortage of that too. Um, and so now I'm on Adderall because weirdly it was the only one I could get. That is weird. It's very bizarre and I didn't expect it. So um, between Adderall and uh, Dexedrine, whichever one happens to be available during this crazy shortage of meds, um, mm -hmm. I sort of go with. I'm not even joking. Um, I feel like, and I, I'm very fortunate to afford like medication. I, but I've thought about this for years now. Do you think that you could function on meth? On meth? Yeah. Mm. Well, I know there's the amphetamine aspect of what we already take for ADHD, but it's it's truly the meth part of that that really starts to get to you. Yeah. So I don't know if I have enough of a like <laughs> of a frame of reference because like this is fine. This yeah. is like all right, I can do this, but I think. I would probably, it would probably be too much functioning on meth would uh -huh. be the problem. I'd be like, I could build an obelisk. I'm going to yeah. look up what an obelisk is and I'm going to build one. And yeah. then, you know, a month later when I like come back online, I'm just like, what the hell is this obelisk? How, How about long, you? 
<laughs> How long do you think it would take people in your life to realize that you're on meth? Not, it would take so long. I'm too weird. <laughs> I'm too weird. There's too much already wrong with my brain or just special about my brain yeah. that make people go like, oh yeah, you're just having kind of a day. How about you? Do you could you function on meth? Um, yeah, I think, <laughs> I, think I could. Uh, no hesitation. You've thought about it. Well, I mean, I've... You know, I, I feel like I would just be super focused and just mm -hmm. uh, like a, a bit weird. I think, I don't know if people would notice. Do you think, okay, when they do notice, if they <laughs> notice, yeah. do you think it would be from behavior or you'd make it long enough for them to notice because of the teeth? Oh, it would be rage. It would be Okay, like, yeah, yeah. I'd, um, if I take too much Adderall, I get so mad. That's really interesting. Yeah. I had that with, um, I got into a huge fight with my mom's husband um, when I was on Vivance originally. And uh, it was warranted and I'm glad I like spoke mm -hmm. up. But like the anger that I felt in that moment, even though it was controlled, I was like, there's way more underneath. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that actually feels really weird. Yeah. Huh. Not used to that. But Adderall's just been delightful. Do you, So you feel like you get sort of angy tweaky? Oh, dude, I get so mad. Um, mm -hmm. It's, but not like, um... <laughs> Not like, like take it out on my friends or family. Right. Um, it's just like mad at like how stupid everyone is. Not like yeah. stupid, but like when, I don't know, I fall for like all of those like clickbait, like boomer articles, you know, mm -hmm. but not like the, not like the Republican ones where it's like, guess what this alien just did in Central Park, you know? And I'm like, right. oh, what the f did it do? Yeah, tell me about it. Yeah, yeah that's, but uh, I just get like annoyed. And so I have to dial it back and um, sedate I myself. I think, um we've all got just kind of a, a limit when it comes to that. And I think you're, if, if a medication affects you in that way, you just have a little bit less of that limit. And you're so used to operating under the limit that you have that like you mm -hmm. fly off the handle, but don't realize you're feeling that. And you're like, Oh, that was, that's weird. I didn't, yeah, that doesn't feel very good to me. Have you ever thought of yourself as like tortured? Um, I think teenage Damien really liked that. Actually, that's something I would just work through in therapy or started yeah. to anyway, because this is the first. Well, it's been a hell of a week, but mm -hmm. prior to this, um, <laughs> it's Sunday. Uh, <laughs> oh God. It's been a hell of a seven days. Yeah. Um, but prior to this, I had this feeling of like things are going really, really well for the first time. Like I, I don't have anything to complain about and I've got a lot of things to be grateful for. And it's a matter of like, I realized I felt a little guilty about that because mm -hmm. I've always connected with other people about like, you know, commiserating about things and holding space for someone else to have an issue and then yeah. be like, you know, I've been through that. You can get through that. Or just if they want someone to listen, I can do that too. Mm -hmm. And I feel guilty being like, yeah, everything's awesome. Uh, yeah. I've been working really hard and uh, oh, yeah. my, my anime premiered and you know, all these things. I don't know what to do about that. Yeah. So yeah. And so you've been working on that in therapy. What did the therapist suggest? Um, you know, I think it's my body is so used to having these things that like, mm -hmm. I also have a very hard time relaxing. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So I think it's a matter of finding things that I can be joyful about and specifically spending time making an effort to show myself kindness and do things that I enjoy without any expectation of it. Yeah. And, you know, realizing that this state of mind is kind of what we're all fighting for. Mm -hmm. And so when we're here, we should, you know, utilize it. But point is, like, from teenager to, like, mid-adulthood, I think I was very enamored with the idea of, you know, I had a pretty rough childhood and I, like, stood by that. And it was almost like a badge of honor. Like, you can't understand my mm -hmm. life. I had a hard childhood. And now I'm just like, dog, <laughs> everybody's got something. Like, yeah. maybe... Just let it go. I feel like with the autism, it's hard to try to find the line of like, am I feeling sorry for myself or am I like just truly uh, processing something horrible that happened? Yeah. Like I'm like, am I, am I harping on this too much? Like, it's just, I don't, I, I, I don't know what's like an appropriate amount of time, but yeah. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people, everyone has, I don't want to say like, I mean, everyone pretty much has trauma. And so like, we're not saying like, get over it. Um, no, certainly not. Yeah. It's just like, um. What was I saying then? <laughs> well, you were saying like, I, to, forgive me if you weren't, but um, it sounded like the questioning of, you know, what emotions are valid? Like, you know, yeah, again, yeah. am I feeling sorry for myself or is this something that I need to actually work through? Yeah. And then like thinking that like you're some, you know, brooding artist where when it's like, oh, am I brooding 
from the trauma or am I harping on it and I seem like a loser, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I can never tell. <laughs> I don't know if anyone can define that for you except for you. Yeah. So I think if you're having those thoughts. That um, I'm a loser. <laughs> that you're probably a big old, just a big old loser. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's, it's a matter of like trusting what you're feeling because you're feeling it, you know? Yeah. Also, you didn't ask, so sorry. Uh, but what you know you're like i never know what to think i'm like here's what you may be thinking oh no like, i you're you're completely right i also just got sidetracked by the legos so i was like oh god i forgot i'm also where's um i don't have that long green stick piece. you do it's I in do. the i do wow guys Yo, Yo, that's embarrassing i just want to say i have never believed in tarot astrology the like mm-hmm but me asking where the thing was and you knowing exactly where it was. What am I? <laughs> a very damn good question, Sarah. What what sign do you think I am? Oh, it'll surprise sign. you. Um, you're Pisces. No. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't put stock in it, but I don't judge anyone for doing it. But um, you are a Pisces. Libra. I am. Hey, there we go. Yeah. Neat. You, you definitely give off Libra vibes. I'm balanced and I shallow. Don't, I don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, Libra is like the scale, so it's oh, like you're, sure. you're balanced, charming, um, mm. a little bit superficial, and a little bit of a liar. Because like, if you maintain, there's like, oh, you do a lot of compromise to like maintain balance. Sure. Where like you don't take any like hard stances, but I do take very hard stances, and that's because of the autism. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I like having hard opinion on things. <laughs> I wonder what the moon's influence on autism is. <laughs> it's it's not powerful enough. They're like I barely just manage tides. You think yeah. I can handle your tism as well? That tis is. How far along are you on this? I'm doing okay. I feel like are you at this? No. Oh hell yeah, but you still made the um terrarium? Yeah. Or what is it? Base? Yeah. Base. I think I'm doing okay. You're doing great. Thanks. I wasn't fishing, but tell me I'm doing great. It's not a competition, but you are doing fine. I'm uh, the winningest boy of all. Um, thank you. Well, guys, it looks like we're going to have to do a part two. There's literally so much fun footage from a Damien and I's chat and episode of Block Party. So part two is going to come out next week. I just didn't want the episode to be four hours long, which I'm sure most of you probably wouldn't mind. But make sure to like and subscribe. There is a new episode of Block Party every week. This was supposed to go out Sunday, but I might have forgotten that I had a stand up show last night and that went incredibly well. But thank you, Damien, for being on. And thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you next week. Bye. Bye.